Howdy and welcome back to another AppSmith episode. Kevin Blanco here, Senior Developer Relations Advocate and your trusty guide to unlocking the potential of internal enterprise apps. I hope you're doing great today. AppSmith is proud to introduce custom widgets so you can have the freedom to create entirely new widgets tailored to your needs. And in case you missed it, I encourage you to watch our first introductory video where we showcase how to build an entire custom widget from scratch. It is a great starting point because today we'll deep dive into the data model. The data model is the mechanism you can pass data and control data back and forth of your custom widget, and it can be integrated with custom JavaScript objects, databases, APIs, and other widgets. So today we'll learn how to first pass data to the model manually, then how to pass data to the model using JavaScript objects, Third, how to pass data to the model using data sources and queries. Fourth, how to pass data back and forth the widget using the AppSmith model. And last but not least, passing data to the model from another widget dynamically. So without further ado, let's get started. All right, to learn everything about data model, I have this empty application right here. And let's drag and drop our first custom widget into the canvas so we can start learning about the data model. So let's find custom under the display section and let's drag and drop the first custom widget. Now, the data model is how you pass data into your custom widget so you can use that for your functionality, your display, or whatever you want to do in your custom widget. So it's very important as you might understand and there's some multiple ways to pass that data into the custom widget. Now, the first one, which is the probably the most easiest is passing hard coded values. And once you click a custom widget, you will see its properties on the right. One of those being the default model. And in this example, we have an object which actually has a array of tips. That's all it has and it's completely hard coded. And that's what we are going to be able to access in the editor source. So let's actually go to edit source here. And this will take us to the actual custom widget editor. This is very familiar because it looks like any other uh, code editor out there like CodePen or GS Fiddle, any of those you will feel very familiar with it. Now this sample uses React.js, but you could basically select any of the existing templates for using Vue or Vanilla.js or bring your own libraries as you wish. So for this example, what I wanna show you is how do I read that information that we pass into the model? And it's fairly simple. All you have to use is appsmith.model and the name of the object you passed. Now, as you notice, we pass something called tips. So that's the way we access it on the actual code, which is that tips. So whatever you pass on the appsmith.model, that's what you are able to access in your custom widget code. <coughs> now, uh, that's the same for, for example, rendering data. As you can see here, we are accessing the appsmith.model.tips, which is an array of tips, and we accessing the uh, current index position in that array. And the current index is just a mechanism to understand in which position of the array we are at. So as you can see, when we click the next tip, uh, custom widget button, it will be iterating throughout all of the tips in the array and every time you click it, the index in which you are at is going to be updating to the next one. It's a very simple custom widget. It's the perfect example to get into the world of custom widgets. Now, that's not the case for all custom widgets, right? You probably want to bring your own data, not just hard coded, but from a data source, from JavaScript, from other widgets. Let's build something more um, actual to close life. Um, the first thing we're going to do is create a new JavaScript object under the JavaScript tab here in the editor. And let's, you know, just an example, let's put whatever name we want. I'm going to call it example GS. And here I'm just going to keep a function, a very simple function, which is going to return values that we're going to be fed into our custom widget. Custom widget data. That's the name I'm going to put to this function. And here I'm going to return something. That something, for the sake of testing, is going to be this same object that we're passing hard coded. I'm going to put it here. Let me format it. 
And again, we're here just returning a hard-coded data, but from a JavaScript object. Now, in your apps made application, you probably have JavaScript objects that manipulate data, edit data. But what I want you to see is that as easy as returning the data you want, whatever the data is, as long as it's an object, you can pass it to a custom widget model and access it on your custom widget functionality. So now all we have to do is use the data binding functionality on the default model using the double curly brackets, and we will be able to access our JavaScript object. Remember, we name it example GS. So there you go, dot custom widget data, which is a function. And that actually is going to return the data that we just saw. And actually we can see the evaluated uh, data here. As you can see, we're returning the same tips array and that's feeding the custom widget functionality. Now we don't have to adapt anything in the custom widget code because it's pretty much the same structure. So as you can see, it's working. If we deploy our application, everything should be working fine. But in this case, we are dynamically passing data from JavaScript into our custom widget, which means that if for some reason we modify this, I don't know, in our JavaScript file, we have any type of, um, you know, custom business logic. If that changes and if we go back to our application, that should dynamically change. So let's actually uh, go back to here, deploy our application once again. And if we see the next uh, tip, it's going to be actually changed from JavaScript. So indeed, it's working. And, and as simple as that, as you can see, passing data from JavaScript into a custom widget is super simple. All you have to do is return whatever object you want in the form that you wish, and then you can access that structure in your custom widget. Now let's take a look at a query. So actually bringing data from a database or any data source. I have a sample database here, which is uh, this very simple uh, tips database, which is a Postgres database that it is the same. It has a table of tips, but in this case, I'm going to pass or I'm going to feed my custom widget from data retrieved from a database query. So let's do that. Let's go to our queries section and create a new database query. Uh, the name of the data source is called database. And uh, that's what I'm going to be selecting. And here I can write whatever uh, SQL syntax I want. So I'm going to select uh, tips or tip. That's the name of the table column from the table tips. And that's it. If I run it, I should be able the response to see the response here. And as you can see, there it is. We're basically retrieving an array of tips. But in this case, the data structure is a bit different because inside of each object of the array, we have a key called tip. So we might need to do some adjustments in our custom widget, but that's totally fine. We're going to learn how to do it. Super simple. So how do we pass that information into our custom widget? Super easy. Let's put a name on this query so it's easier to understand. Let's call it uh, tips from database. So we have several options. The first thing is we could actually just pass it here. Uh, do uh, tips from database, that data. But we have a problem here. Uh, the custom widget expects an object. And we already seen that AppSmith is telling us, hey, this value does not evaluate to an object. You're actually passing me a array of data. And our custom widget expects an object. Normally, custom widgets data model has to be an object. So in this case, we have several options. One is to actually just, you know, pass an object inside that object, create the tips key. And in that tips key, we could pass this here. But we will have to stringify it for in order to work. So it's fine. But remember that we had uh, the data coming from the JavaScript object. We could actually combine those two, which is on our JavaScript object call the data source and pass the data in the format that we want. It gives us more flexibility. Now, this is something that uh, you take the option that works the best for you. I'm just giving you a set of tools. So in my JavaScript object, remember that here I'm returning the array of tips, which is hard coded. Well, all I can do is pretty much call my uh, data source and the name of the query is tips from database. So all I have to do is call tips from database that data. 
and that will pass the array into the tips object, which is what the uh, custom widget is expecting. So all I have to do is make a small tweak, go to our custom widget editor, because inside each object in the array of tips, each tip now has a uh, key called tip. So we have to do a small adjustment so we can actually render that value. So like I mentioned, all I have to do is here, this already works, is put dot tip, because that's the name that now each object has into the actual tips array. And there you go. Now we can see that this is actually rendering fine. So if we deploy our application once again, we will be able to see that indeed we are scrolling through the tips and they're actually being fed by the database, the Postgres database, not manually, not from a hard-coded value from JavaScript, but actually from a data source. So this is great. I think you have learned a lot of things right now. Now, we have seen how to pass data from the outside world, in this case, a data source, a JavaScript object, into our widget. Now let's do it backwards. How do we pass data from our widget into the outside world so we can use that data in another widget, in a data source, in an API request, etc. It's very similar, actually. So we can do that by coming to our source editor. And uh, normally we will do this, for example, on a form of an event. For example, somebody clicks a button or as a result or some type of evaluation. For the sake of this demo, I'm going to be using the existing event of the next tip button, which what it does is iterating throughout all of the tips in the array tips. And that function is this one that calls here uh, handle next. It's just one line of code which just set the current index. So how do we pass data back to the actual AppSmit um, model? All we have to do is call AppSmit that update model. So the update model is a function that is expecting an object. Just like we pass data as an object, we have to pass data back as an object. So in this object, I can pass one of two things. The first thing is an existing key that exists, so we will be replacing that key, or we can just pass any other key and it's going to be a new value in the model. So I'm just gonna call a new one, call selected index, and I'm gonna pass the, cur the uh, current index value. So that means that I'm passing back every time I click the next tip button, a value to the model. And as you can see, every time I click, I actually get a visual representation that the model has been updated. AppSpeed let me know, hey, you updated the model. And that's great. And we can actually see it here on the uh, console. We can see that every time we click the next tip button, a new update model event is being triggered. And we are updating the model with this key called selected index. So now we can go back to our editor and bring from example a text widget and use that value in any other custom in any other widget for example so all i have to do is put the name of my custom widget which name is custom one i could put another name actually <laughs> and all i have to do is access the model object and the name that we gave it which as you remember is called selected index so if, if we deploy our application we will see that every time we click the next tip button we will see that the selected index updates and we will be able to see that in the UI. So there you go. Once we click the next tip button, what is happening is we are sending the update model event, which is updating a value called selected index. And that's what we're using to render in this small text field here. So as you can see, it updates the zero position, the one, the two, the three, and so on and so forth. So. Here you can see how easy you can pass data to custom widgets, but also custom widgets can send data back. So in a real world example, we could access that value and for example, pass it to a JavaScript object, which we could access at any point, just again, by access the custom one, that model and the name that we gave it, which is selected index. And that's how we can access this data in a custom, in a JavaScript object. So that's fairly uh, easy to understand. So now let's take a look at our last example, which is 
how do we pass data from another widget dynamically without having to have an intermediary? Let's say JavaScript object or a data source. Let's say that you have, for example, a table. And once you select data on that table, you want to automatically pass it to the data model. That's fairly easy to do as well. So I, I have uh, a sample database. Remember that AppSmit has sample databases. One is a Postgres users database, and the other one is a movies sample database, a MongoDB database that you can use for testing, which is great. So I'm going to create a new query against that uh, movies MongoDB sample database that anyone has access in AppSmit. Um, and I'm just going to remove the query. I want all the data in this movies. I'm going to call it movies. And once we run it, you will see that what we have is basically just a um, an object of movies. So I'm going to bind that data to a table. So here I have this table widget, which is showcasing uh, the information of some movies in our movies database. And what I want to do is every time I click one of the records on this table, I want to pass data to my custom widget so I can display it in whatever form I like. So let's do that. I'm going to delete my custom widget model and I'm going to also delete my custom widget code so we can start from scratch. So what I want to do is a very simple, a very simple example is I want to pass the name of the movie that I'm clicking on the table to my custom widget. I could pass more data, not only the name, but for the sake of this demo, I'm just going to pass the name. So what I'm expecting here, like I said, is a name of the, the title of the movie. Um, and the way I pass it is accessing the table selected row property. The way I do it is just accessing the table name, in this case is table one, dot selected row, and then I can access any of the different values of this row. I want the title of the movie, that's what I'm passing to the uh, title object. And I have to put this inside uh, this. Let me, there you go. So let me make this bigger so it's easier to read. There you go. I'm just passing the title and uh, that's all I'm doing. And you can pass as many as you want, not only one object, you can pass two objects, three objects, what have you, as long as it is an object that you can separate by commas, that's all you have to do. So now go to our source editor and let's see what we have to do to display that information. And here we're going to learn something new. Um, so what I'm doing here is just passing, uh, oh, actually I forgot about the imports here at the top. I have to import React. There you go. I import React and React DOM and my application has something very simple. I'm just defining the title and set title function that is going to be binding to the uh, React state. And what I'm doing is just rendering the title. That's the name of the parameter I'm passing. But here I'm introducing a new AppSmith function called onModelChange. Turns out that every time you click a movie on the table, this is updating the model that we're passing on the custom widget model because we are actually binding this to the table. And every time we click a new table row, this is triggering a new event update and we have to do something about it. This is not going to be automatically done by AppSmith. You have to respond to model changes. And that's actually great because it gives you more control about what happens in your AppSmith custom widget. So the way you respond to model changes happening from the outside is that you define a AppSmith that own model change. And there you do whatever you want. What I'm doing here is just defining, oh, I'm going to set the title given the value that I'm getting from the AppSmith that model that title. So if the title is not the same, please set the title to the value I'm receiving and that's it. So all I'm doing is rendering the title and that's it. That's it's super simple. There's not not a lot of code here. So as you can see, we had our AppSmith on ready event. That's normal because we have to do something when the widget is ready. But now we learn another function called on model change. So now every time I click a row on the table, a event model is triggered and this function on model change is being receiving that change and doing something about it. And what is that something? It's basically just updating the title in the React model. 
So there you go. Let's deploy our application. And every time I click a movie on the movies table, the title of that movie is being passed directly to our custom widget without any intermediary. As simple as that, we can work with the data model in JavaScript using custom widget. So there you go. Now you learn how to achieve this functionality and you know everything about the data model and you're ready to start building your custom application. You are now equipped with everything you need to know about custom widgets data model. In the upcoming videos, we'll go deeper into other topics like styling your widget, custom events, and interactive widgets using your preferred frameworks and libraries like React, Vue, Angular, TypeScript, or your preferred framework. And actually, let me know in the comments what you'd like me to explain, as AppSmith supports most of the modern JavaScript libraries out there. Stay tuned for next custom widget video by subscribing to our channel and now go and build something awesome using AppSmith. See you on the next one.